Welcome back, guys. So yeah, that was my first attempt at shooting some product stuff, and it was actually a lot of fun. I got to use a motorized turntable, a few lights, and a piece of black acrylic, which if you have any tips on how to keep that thing clean, I'm all ears. But enough about all that. As you can probably guess from the intro, today we are going to be setting up the A7S III with some rigging options, specifically from Condor Blue. I think I might have a small rig part in there somewhere, but most of what we're going to be looking at today is from Condor Blue. Now, who or what is Condor Blue? Condor Blue is a US-based company founded in 2019 by LA-based cinematographer Lucas Colombo. The short version of their story is this. Back in 2018, they were frustrated by the lack of support equipment available for the Pocket 4K, which had just been released at the time. So something as simple as a D-tap cable to power the camera was only available from one retailer and had a price tag of over $80. This led them to begin designing high quality production accessories with the filmmaker in mind, but also to stand behind those products with a lifetime warranty. Throw in exceptional customer service and super competitive pricing and you have what is now known as Condor Blue. All right, so we have a lot going on here. First up, we have a 15 millimeter side loading base plate. This base plate is going to be what we connect the cage to, the rods for the V-mount battery and the Nucleus M, as well as a 501 style plate so we're able to throw it onto a tripod. So we definitely want this little piece of equipment to be solid and well built. This base plate is an RE standard bridge plate and it supports 15 millimeter rods. It utilizes a Manfrotto 501 style plate, which is very common. It also comes with quarter 20 and 3 8 inch mounting screws and offers the same size tripod mount threads on the bottom. All right, so next up we have a pair of 15 millimeter rods. Not much to say here. Um, we will insert these into the base plate, which will then allow us to mount accessories such as a follow focus and a V-mount battery plate. All right, so moving on. This is a V-mount battery plate. This is what's going to allow us to send power to everything aboard this rig, eliminating the need for internal batteries. We're talking camera, recorder, monitor, follow focus, and zoom motors. We're going to have one single power source, and trust me, it's so nice this way. No mid-shoot power failures or having to take things apart to swap batteries. This one has multiple output options such as DTAP, 15, 12, and 5 volt DC, it also has a charging port for the V-mount battery, as well as switchable 7.4 and 8.4 VDC. We'll just use this with this battery, which should easily power everything on the rig for like a week. Okay, maybe not a week, but a hell of a long time. All right, so next up we have all of the power cables that we need, including the D-tap for the A7S III battery. We have the D-tap for the Atomos Ninja, we also have a D-tap for the H5 Zoom. And we also have a braided HDMI cable 2.0 that we would need in order to record um, ProRes RAW externally to the Ninja 5. I'm also going to use this D-tap splitter I got on Amazon. So I have enough places to plug all of these in. It's pretty convenient. All right, so next up we have a couple of magic arms. This one is the basic cine arm. I'll probably use this for the zoom recorder. And then we have this other beast, the cine arm pro. This thing is awesome. I love the big ratchet handles, the light weight of it. And since you can change out the ball mounts with ones that have these RE locating pins, like I've done here, you can be sure that whatever accessory you put on here isn't going to cause the arm to twist off. Now I think back to the last magic arm I bought, I think it was a small rig. I used it for mounting a monitor onto the Ronin S and it would always twist off or fail because of the weight. It was super annoying and super unreliable. Anyways, we also have a bunch of these quick release plates that I'll just screw onto accessories like the Ninja or the Zoom that allows us to quickly and easily take them off without any tools, save for if we wanna lighten the load or need to swap out components. And one more quick little note about these quick release plates. You can also get these RE pin anti-twist spacer plates for them. So accessories like the Ninja that can utilize the RE mount won't twist off. They're pretty awesome. Now I'll also throw in this small rig wooden side handle as well. 
I don't know if it'll be necessary or even feel balanced once we get everything put together, but we'll give it a try. And last but not least, I've been waiting for this guy since August. I think that's when I ordered it. This is the new A7S III cage. I love the look of this thing. I love the top handle record button. It has multiple quarter and three eighths inch threaded holes with RE locating pins um, for anti-twist accessories. The handle sits here in the adjustable NATO rail so you can move it around once everything is mounted to dial in the balance. There are cold shoes everywhere, an HDMI and USB cable clamp, which wasn't in stock when the cage shipped. And what to me is quite possibly one of the nicest features of this thing, and that is the Arca Swiss quick release system. If you wanna take this thing off a tripod and go onto a gimbal, it's never been easier. I used to hate switching back and forth, dealing with unscrewing plates, then rebalancing. It's so inconvenient and it really disrupts the groove you get into at times. Now with gimbals like the DJI RS2, you can go right from cage to gimbal in seconds. I am really looking forward to that. So yeah, that should be just about everything. I'm going to put everything together here really quick and we're done. We'll take a few seconds to check everything out. So let's do this. set up and ready to go. We have the Atomos Ninja and we also have the start and stop button on top of the handle here which as you can see on both screens works flawlessly. We have the H5 recorder and we also have the Nucleus M down here so if we want to pull focus we absolutely can do that. And let's just go ahead and do that. Silk is smooth. Now this is all being powered by this V-mount battery we have here. Um, this battery lasts for hours, so that's really, really convenient. Now, this rig setup isn't necessarily for vlogging, it's more for interviewing or promo videos. Um, I guess I could try to use it for vlogging, but I think my arm would start getting really, really tired. Um, but what's great about this is we can easily tear this down and make it a more compact rig. So I'm going to undo some cables and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I got all the cables removed. Um, took about 10 seconds, but if we want to lighten the load of this, all we have to do is use these quick release plates to get rid of the Atomos Ninja, along with the H5 recorder, same thing, super easy. Now, if we want to get rid of this cage off the base, we use this side loading release over here, and it pops right out. And now we have a handheld solution. Now we can take this a step further, and use this quick release back here to take the camera out of the cage and throw it onto a gimbal. Super, super useful. All right guys, so to wrap it up, as I was putting this together, I really feel like these guys nailed every minute detail with this stuff. You can tell filmmakers are the ones behind the design process because everything feels solidly built and the attention to detail and more importantly functionality is something that you don't usually find at this price point. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this stuff isn't expensive, it's definitely an investment. But if there's one thing I've learned about buying gear, it's you generally get what you pay for. So for me, it's always been an exercise about looking at cost and being able to identify value. The lifetime guarantee and fantastic customer service and I'm not just saying that about the customer service. Like I said before, I ordered this back in August and it was supposed to ship, I believe September 24th, 
It got pushed back a couple more times while they continued to refine the design after people in the field had tested it and returned with feedback. Instead of shipping an imperfect product, they sent out multiple updates, free gear, as well as a $50 store credit. I really appreciated the honesty, open communication, and if you guys are looking for a way to protect your investment and add a ton of functionality to your workflow, maybe give these guys a chance. I know I'm glad I did, and I'm really excited to see what they come up with next. But that's it. Um, Condor Blue's website is going to be linked down below, as well as all of the parts I used for this build. They make stuff for a ton of other cameras as well, so definitely take some time to check them out. Until next time, I'm Chris. See ya.